here where we're located, this is Pilgrim Vineyard. We're just east of the town of Lodi. And this is, this is a 16 acre parcel that has a long history. It goes back, we think, till just after Prohibition. This is a place, uh, as a matter of fact, a European, a French farmer friend of ours said this is the best place on earth. Lodi is the best place on earth from his perspective for growing trees and vines. And definitely the soil, the climate, the, the hot days and the cold nights, huge temperature fluctuations here in the summer, uh, 50, 60 degrees uh, when you start getting the delta breezes. So yeah. um, it, it's really good for growing grapes. So one of the things about this vineyard that we really appreciate is tied to our love of history because these, vine, these vines were here before we were. And we don't really know who planted them, but we feel like we're stewards of these vines. So as old vine vin vineyards are being uprooted, um, this one is still here and is still prospering. Uh, these Zinfandel plants were planted. We know for sure they go back to the 50s, but we think maybe even the 30s from the characteristics. Uh, they put in uh, St. George root. And you'll notice that these look like little trees, and if you're not familiar, and what it means is that the plants are self-regulating. These old vine Zinfandels have become more and more valuable as vintners recognize that they're self-regulating, they don't overcrop the fruit, they don't give us more fruit than we really want. Over the years, they began to be kind of just discounted and forgotten about. And then as we move into the 70s and 80s, uh, Zinfandel became popular as a white wine and Lodi Zinfandel really made its name in White Zin. White Zin has become a very popular brand. There's just gallons and tons of it sold every year even now. But what, what's happened over the years is we've really begun to appreciate these old vines and what they do for the quality of the fruit. So we, we showed up out here in 1998 and we had our five sons and we were looking for a place for them to stay out of trouble and get to work. <laughs> and we saw this vineyard as an opportunity to do that. And so we cleared off this back area, built our home, and began to try to learn about farming. I was raised actually in Alaska, and uh, Martine was raised in, in France. So uh, neither of us, are, although French should know about this stuff, right? I guess that's, we should expect <laughs> But that. I did not. <laughs> So anyway, we, we came out here and my family uh, came out to help us. We ended up ripping out oh, about 500 of the vines that were here. There was a Bermuda grass and some other things going on. It was trees. flood irrigated. Yeah, we had trees in here. <laughs> so this really was a family effort. There's three generations of Hershey's yeah. out there working on the vines. We became uh, aware and acquainted with Satui in 2003 and uh, started to sell our grapes to you folks. And we just had a great run with Satua. You guys have treated us wonderfully. And, and uh, what's it been, 17 years now? Uh, <laughs> John Bunyan, who going back to England in the 1600s, wrote a book named Pilgrim's Progress, which basically talked about all the trials to be overcome in life. And it was a huge allegory of encountering difficulties and conquering them. And by the time we bought this property, which is almost 16 acres, we had been married 16 years at the time, and we had lived in 16 homes. Now we counted temporary cottages and, and various places, but we had moved a lot because of education and job changes. And so we felt like pilgrims and we really felt like we were part of this allegory. And we came here and said, this is Pilgrim Ranch. And so yeah. this is uh, Pilgrim Ranch, Pilgrim Vineyard, and uh, Pilgrim Old Vines in Fendel. You, when you line up these grapes on a trellis, th there's a uniformity to the fruit. They're all getting the same sun. They're getting the same shade. It's the same focus with the wind and everything. If you look at our vineyard, we try to hang two clusters of fruit per spur. There are two spurs per cordon out here and it's, it's much more stingy uh, than, than a regular uh, Zinfandel that you'd find that would be more mass produced is what I call it. it. On a good year, we're hoping for two tons an acre, right? Uh, and economically, that makes it 
make a lot of sense why somebody put it on a trellis because those trellis folks are getting maybe up to 10 tons to the acre. And so the, the, the ratio of fruit to vine is so much uh, stronger with the old vines that you get a more potent flavor of fruit that comes out of it. I think that contributes to it as well. So I think there's a tradition in our yeah. country yeah. over the last two centuries of agriculture playing a huge role in the character of the families that are growing. And I think I understand that a little better now because that's kind of the experience we had in our family. Uh, and and uh, we've, you guys have been through a lot this year and I think it's probably appropriate that we once again express our appreciation for just how well you've treated us and how much uh, we just love what you folks do with our fruit. We uh, Every year we ship it out and we go over with it over to the winery and uh, just, just to really appreciate how you folks just do great things with the fruit every year, it seems like. Never a bad year. <laughs>